Kevin Mayer, former CEO of TikTok and longtime executive at Disney. Thank you so much for joining us today. There is so much to talk to you about this morning, but I want to start with a headline about your former company, TikTok, this news that, that parent ByteDance is going to be holding back on that IPO amid a regulatory crackdown in China. What does all of that news say to you about the future of tech giants in China? Well, look, I, Julia, nice to, nice to be joining you again. Um, it's always a pleasure. I, it's hard to say exactly what it means. I do think that it's um, surprising to me at this point with a company like ByteDance, which is so obviously ready to be a public company and should access the public markets, that um, a good nine months after I left, uh, these uh, geopolitical concerns are still are still rocking the boat over there. So it's disappointing to see it. Uh, I don't have any specific insight other than what I'm reading and what you're reading, but it is a bit surprising to me. That's a company le you know, led by a great team of, um, of executives with an amazing technology and amazing product. Should be a public company in my opinion. Kevin, right now you're focused on, on your investing, uh, both as running a SPAC and also other investments. And I'm wondering whether you would invest in a Chinese company now based on what you know. Well, that is a, a very interesting question. Um, there is a continuing sense of uncertainty and risk that is uh, that's clearly present uh, for investors, uh, including myself, that those that presents um, a higher bar for returns. So, uh, you know, I, I might very well invest in the Chinese company, but my expectations for what it could yield would be heightened. So I think that it just adds a risk factor um, and and it does it does create uh, it creates difficulty and it creates higher expectations for what you can ultimately achieve in success with an investment in China. Interesting. And at the center of this latest Chinese uh, regulatory crackdown is concern about data and the collection of data based on what you know. And as you look at the landscape right now, you know, obviously we're we're focused on privacy and data here in the U.S. as well. Do you think that we should be concerned um, either as consumers or if potential investors should be concerned about the type of data that TikTok and other Chinese companies are collecting? Well, look, when I was at TikTok, I think the data that uh, that, that particular app collected was actually a bit less than what other uh, similarly situated social media apps were collecting. So I just think it's, it's, it's good data hygiene and privacy hygiene to be very aware and cognizant of what you're sharing on social media because that data is captured, that data can come back uh, uh, later in life to, uh, <laughs> to potentially haunt you. So I think it just makes sense to be careful uh, in any event. Um, look, I think that, uh, that data collection and privacy is a global issue. It's not just a China or US issue. And I think it should be taken seriously. And I think governments will continue to create more urgent requirements and, and guardrails around the use and collection of data. So I do believe that as investors, we should be also aware of the risk that that entails, that some of these business models might not be as robust in the future as they are today, given that there might be a, cur a curtailment in the amount of data that they can access and then deploy for monetization purposes. Hmm. Kevin, I wonder if they might be less robust uh, also because of ongoing regulatory strategies from governments ex-China. Uh, you've got an EO out of the White House on Friday about competitiveness, obviously the EU, DOJ, FTC. Is that changing the playbook right now, even for something as limited as M&A, but maybe something more broadly, at least in tech? I think it is. I think that the, this ongoing march towards greater privacy, which I applaud, by the way, there's a lot of positive... Um, there's a positive nature to that in terms of how it affects people's lives and the risk that it entails for people, people's use of social media and technology generally. I applaud it, but I think it, is, it, it extends well beyond China. And I think EU, for instance, was one of the first movers in making privacy a very, privacy regulation, a very prominent part of the regulatory regime. And I think it's wise and I think it will impinge upon monetization opportunities in the future. I think targeted ads will be, will be more difficult to deliver than they are today. It will take a much more sophisticated approach to get ads in front of people that you know are interested in those advertisements. Things of that nature will become more and more difficult to deploy, and I think that will cause um, challenges. Now, it might also cause opportunities if companies can crack the code, even in the face of these more difficult data usage uh, paradigms. I think those companies will actually succeed even more so than and separate themselves from, from the pack even more so than they can today. So I think it creates a bit of a, an opportunity, but mostly I think it, it does create 
a threat to monetization.